by reconnecting with nature, we can deepen our connection to our own physical vessel. And so the oils can serve as a reminder and as a reconnection to the true uh, facilities that nature provides us as humans. Dr. Nick, welcome back to Wellness Force. It's so good to see you again. I'm delighted to be here with you, Josh. Thank you so much for having me back. You know, we're in interesting times. Interesting is like an understatement. Hello. We're like in the craziest times for transformation. And a lot of what we talked about two plus years ago, back when I was in my old apartment, now I'm in a brand new studio. Like there's a lot more spaciousness, but there's also a lot more constriction and contraction that I think I've been feeling. I know our collective has been feeling. And before we hit that record button, you said something so potent that I want to mm -hmm. dive right into. You said, I'm really proud and I'm really grateful for this thriveability and this adaptability for the new world that I've been cultivating. Like it's been two plus years. What exactly is thriveability and adaptability mean to you? Like what have you been doing for you in the past couple of years? Yeah. Well, you know, the opportunity with every challenge is, um, you know, the breakthrough of that is growth. And so when a pandemic was announced and we were all concerned about our health uh, as um, all of our global awareness came into this issue, what does that create for us? It creates an opportunity to reflect on where our health and well being is not at its optimal performance. It shows us where our flaws are in our system. You know, maybe more of us are aware that our media system is not entirely true and the information that we're learning we get to be more discerning with so in many ways i feel that this pandemic has been an opportunity for us to become more resilient and to listen to our inner authority to feel our intuition to use our inner wisdom to guide us into how can we be more adaptable? The start of the pandemic, we started food gardens in our house in Ashland, Oregon for our first time. So we got to learn a little bit more deeply about composting our food scraps and to build soil and to grow our own food and, and that feeling of the vital nutrition and intelligence that an artichoke growing from your garden can give you uh, uh, upon cooking it and ingesting it. I've looked at this period of time to look at my own life, to see my flaws and where I can grow. And by feeling into how I can grow, how can I also serve others with my passion and with my purpose? That was the most bomb drop answer I think I've ever heard about mindset during the pandemic. And I say pandemic because we've done a lot of content, Nick, about what I believe is really going on. You and I were chatting and you believe we're in the middle of World War III. I also feel that same sentiment. But this war is different. This war is a war of the mind and a mind of the heart, uh, a war of the ancient brain, like the amygdala, the things that make us paranoid or, or fractured with fear. And I think about the adaptability that I've had to look into the mirror for, and it is, what programs do I run that don't serve me anymore? What beliefs do I have that really don't serve me anymore? And those beliefs are actually a byproduct of the tools, the resources, the community that I choose to call in or I choose to ignore. And I feel like this conversation we're about to have today about the power of these oils, you know, we talked about this two plus years ago with essential oil wizardry. There is a wizardry in nature. There is this beauty in nature that we can call in, that we can be in harmony with. But there's something, Nick, and I'm curious how you feel about this. There's something about the psyche that when we're in fear, when we're paralyzed, we sometimes can forget that these tools of nature even exist, that these tools of essential oils even exist. Before we dive into the science of oils, like, can you go to that place mentally? Because so many people, brother, are right there. They're just paralyzed and they just even forget that we even have these tools in the first place. What do you make of that? Well, 
I think what you're bringing up, Josh, is as a collective culture and species, we have slowly been phasing away from nature, learning and integrating the belief that we are somehow separate from nature. And the more that we continue to integrate into that belief, which is not true, the more out of place humankind continues to feel. And what's one thing that's so powerful about the oils is they're the concentrate, concentrated essence and intelligence found inside the plant. And found inside each bottle is a deep reflection from nature. It is um, really breathing in the ground up eucalyptus leaves uh, by putting a, just a single drop of eucalyptus into the hands and breathing it in your lungs open up and the, the expression of that amazing tree is instantly transported uh, into your body and it helps to break up mucus and phlegm. And it also helps to calm the mind and the nervous system, even though that isn't something that I would necessarily suggest eucalyptus for, by reconnecting with nature, we can deepen our connection to our own physical vessel. And so the oils can serve as a reminder and as a reconnection to the true uh, facilities that nature provides us as humans. And these facilities are something that we just get blunted. Like it's almost like we lose our sensitivity um, to these intuitive faculties where we know that sunlight's great for us. We know that being in nature, the, the Japanese call it Shinrin Yoku, you know, forest bathing. But we know all these things, Nick, but there is something in the psyche. And I'll, I'll ask again, because it's just such a potent question. And from your experience now, it's been so many years, almost two decades, you've been involved in these oils and these medicines, correct? It's been, um, it's been a little over a decade. Okay, well, maybe the 10 years before that in your pharmacological experience that was setting you up for the next 10 years. But the big question, man, is what is it about our psyche that makes us forget? And, and how can we encourage the remembrance of who we are and how we actually can connect to nature, her oils, her medicine, and who she is? Mm -hmm. So um, maybe you can ask the question again, Josh. So think of it like we get blunted almost like a samurai sword um, when it's cutting things. It needs a sharpening from time to time. Yes. And and we get blunted too. our intuition yes. and our ability to reconnect with nature, with oils, with her foods, with with everything that she provides. What is it about us that makes us forget? And what what can we do as a species to remember how to reconnect psychologically, intuitively? Beautiful. So I think our way of living, as we've continued to separate ourselves further from nature, has invited us to numb our senses. You know, we're less, we're less keen on feeling the dirt on the bottom of our feet as we're walking throughout the field and releasing, um, absorbing the negative um, ions and helping to de-stress our physical system through the process of earthing, which is... Uh, been a natural process for um, many generations before us. You know, we're starting to live in, in indoors over the past few, few thousand years, and we're, we're having more of an indoor type of lifestyle where people are working in offices and in front of computers that are emitting high EMF signals and are running electricity, which are affecting our electromagnetic field. You know, the way that we engage with life is affecting our biology and it affects our biology every day. And as we're integrated and indoctrinated into systems of um, education from our public schools, from our colleges, and we are engaging with these types of technologies that are affecting our biology, our senses can get stunned or nulled. And some of us uh, are still learning how to uh, take a deep inhalation and to um, notice the different aromatic qualities when we are walking by uh, a tree 
And we, we might miss the fragrance altogether if we're not paying attention and we're really deep in our minds thinking about what we have to do and uh, the pressures of doing our best to survive in this modern day culture. And so what I've found in my own personal experience is conscientiously engaging with nature. So going into my backyard and doing some Qigong and to allow the sunlight in the morning to land on my chest and on my stomach and to uh, take deep inhalations in and to work with the breath, to meditate in the morning, to feel my connection to my own body because my own body is that natural resource that connects to all living things. And the more that I continue to harmonize and strengthen my physical vessel, my awareness to my physical vessel and my senses, when I step into nature, the more aware of subtle, su uh, subtle cues I am able to connect with. Mm, dude, I, <laughs> I have to laugh because my heart was kind of fluttering when you were speaking and I was, I was feeling the five senses. Oh my God, what a beautiful remembrance right now mm. um, to see, to taste, um, to hear, to touch, to smell. Mm -hmm. these, these senses that we have, that's the way, like that's what I got from you. If we want to sharpen our sort of intuition or our sort of reconnection, we have to actually conscientiously engage with these five faculties, these five senses. And I put Absolutely. smell at the end. I put smell at the end because this is a big one. This has been my number one. It's called Trinity. And uh, this is one of Nick's oils. We're going to talk about Nick's oil so much today. And I'm also mm -hmm. going to link our previous conversation. I was in a different phase of my life. So were you. But yeah. today is going to be like almost even more of a master class on how we all can use these tools with that fifth sense, that smell sense. Because man, for 20 years, Nick, 20 years, I couldn't breathe. I had chronic sinusitis. I was born less than five pounds. I was in an incubator for two weeks. Like my sole contract was like, hey, you need to work <laughs> when I came into the world. Mm -hmm. And um, through that, and I think a lot of people deal with this too, through that um, chronic sinusitis, it was actually a byproduct of chronic use of antibiotics. And so wow. I had to get laser sinus surgery. So by the time I was in my mid twenties, I was so excited to smell things. I mean, just the, the potency of smell and mm. the osmotic medicine that we get, like when we breathe it in. And then I later found in breathwork studies from Dan Brule that our nose has spherical cores that are inside of it that actually treat and condition the air for us to get all of nature's medicine from oxygen. And I started to connect the dots and I was like, oh my God, for the first quarter century of my life, I literally didn't have that fifth sense. It was shut off. Mm -hmm. And it's no surprise that so many of us are, are dealing with this too, because when are we reminded to breathe through our nose? When are we reminded, like you said, to go in our backyard and, and reconnect with just breathing and being in a physical vessel? So for people that don't know, um, let's talk about just this Trinity right here. Trinity is, it's been my all time favorite. I love it the most. It's lavender, peppermint, rosemary. For me, it's like, I guess you could say it's more like a reset. It just resets me. Um, I don't know if that's how you designed it, but just for everyone with us, we're gonna go into the science of the oils, the physiology, the biology. We're also gonna go into the frequency and how these oils can help us on a frequency-based level. And we are gonna explore some of the, the sinus benefits and, and how to use these to actually open up the sinuses so we can engage that that fifth sense but nick share with us man please the trinity like this yeah. one how did you derive this like where did this come from yeah so um trinity we call it our yogi balance blend and it was um developed to support uh, a balancing of the nervous system so rosemary and peppermint are um mildly stimulating and lavender is calming and so this blend really seems to provide almost an adaptogenic like experience where if a person is a little run down, it can give a little pep to their step. If a person is overstimulated, it can help calm them and bring them a little bit more into their body. 
Um, another thing that's really great about Trinity, um, lots of users have reported that it's helpful for headaches. Some people have even reported having some relief of migraines. I find for myself, when I apply it into my temples, mm -hmm. um, that's what I just, literally at, just did at the, uh, at the, at the beginning of a, um, a regular headache, I notice maybe about 70 to 80 ish percent of my headaches will dissolve in about five to 10 seconds. When I take a few drops of this oil, rub it into my fingers and then massage it into my temple. So I find this to be a really adaptable essential oil blend. And I'm so thrilled that it's been such a, a supporter for you, Josh. Yeah. And these oils are done in a very unique way. Um, there's two things, the way you harvest them and the way that you actually instill frequency into them, which recaptures their own frequency. Again, we're talking about this fifth sense. And I really want to speak to someone's subconscious mind right now. When you shut off one of your senses, you lose your sensitivity and your intuition to nature. So we're not just talking about essential oils as a luxury item. We're talking about essential oils as one of the tools in our wellness wheel that can truly help us practically, energetic, energetically, spiritually. Like, so with this fifth sense and, and how you made this, it is for me, maybe the peppermint. I'm feeling like the peppermint is the thing that, that awakens me, that enlivens me. Mm -hmm. And if somebody has like been he hearing about essential oils, I get hit up all the time. I can't even tell you, Nick. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. The essential oil industry. It's like, and it's no knock on MLMs. I'm not spreading hate, like, but the MLM world has just destroyed essential oils. I don't know how you feel about that, but, but maybe share with us how you feel about the industry in general and what's different about yours. You know, the way you extract it, the, the frequency you put into it, just so people can understand these concepts. Mm -hmm. um, well, one thing that I want to share before I um, touch into that, uh, that I feel is important, Josh, is you know, we're talking about knowing the senses and something that I want to bring into our awareness is as a culture, we have been accustomed to synthetic fragrances in all of our body care products and our cleaning yeah. products and our, you know, sprayed onto our clothing and our chemical perfumes. Um, most of us have been brought up into this chemical soup and the synthetic, um, the synthetic molecules um, don't always take to our nose very effectively and uh, can even produce headaches in some individuals. And so when we're accustomed and our, our sense of smell is really numbed because of the overpowering synthetic fragrances. And, um, you know, something that's very interesting is if you were to take a a synthetic perfume and spray it onto a scent strip or a piece of paper. And you could, you could do this with a, a bottle of eucalyptus or um, any type of essential oil that you would like. And if you were to put them into a room and let them sit for days to weeks, what's going to happen is the essential oil is going to continue to fade and soften. And, um, the synthetic is going to smell really strong and chemical like, and I'm very sensitive because I've been retraining my sense of smell for the past decade now. And, um, when I smell a synthetic fragrance, I feel like I get kicked in the nose and oftentimes there's a, a correlation with headaches. And so this is my own body sensitivity. Um, so, I believe you asked for your, uh, I believe you asked the question of what do I think about the essential oil industry? Yes. And I, I perceive that it's a mixed bag. You know, one thing that I'm grateful for that some of these larger companies have done is they've really educated the population about the importance of reconnecting with nature, the importance of oils. And I think that there's a, there's a lot of good sources, there's a lot of great sources, and there's a lot of poor sources, and there's a lot of synthetic um, adulterated crap. And so there's a full spectrum of what is available on the essential oil market. And it's unfortunate that money can drive a, an industry and um, develop greed. 
And perhaps um, part of that issue could be uh, actual supply um, limitations and so much demand that the demand is, is informing the supply chain that they need to adulterate their product. Yeah. And so, you know, this is kind of a my evaluation of a bigger picture. And um and and I, I see I see the problems inherent with that in, in regards to sustainability. And um I am grateful for the the remembrance that um that some of these essential oil companies have brought into uh, the collective field and the collective awareness uh, to remind us the the value of plants and essential oils are concentrated um, plant essences that are rich in terpenes and other aromatic constituents, which are pharmacologically active inside the body at very low concentrations. So oftentimes these terpenes are found in very small concentrations in, inside all types of plants and trees and barks and spices and citrus skins. And, you know, when you, when you squeeze into the orange peel with your, with your nails and you see that juice fly out, um, that's D-limonene and citrus oil is rich in D-limonene and um, that one terpene molecule, which is a monoterpene, has been studied for all types of therapeutic effects, including um, it, it's been looked at as uh, having some anti-tumor qualities. It has been studied for treatment resistant uh, GERD. And, um, you know, what's amazing is the more we tap into nature and we listen to the gifts that she provides, the more we realize that we're able to heal ourselves and become our own doctors. And so I recognize the challenges with the industry and I recognize that there's challenges in every industry. And so what makes our company um, different and unique is um, there's really a number of different um, tools, resources, and energetic attunements that we make in the quality, uh, that we, um, infuse into the quality of our oils. This is what and I'm curious about. How do you, how do you actually get the energy, the frequency into the oils? Is it, is it something where you're electrically charging them? I've heard about this with CBD products as well. And this isn't the first time we've heard of structured water. There's a lot of things that people are using actual frequency or energy to put mm -hmm. into their products, but yours is really, really cool. So share with us that process of actually infusing energy into the oil. Thanks brother. Yeah. So, um, there's quite a number of different processes and it depends on which types of products we're talking about. You know, you mentioned structured water. Um, when we're doing our ultrasonic plant extracts, um, we're starting with organic or wildcrafted uh, herbs and we're using, um, we use uh, structured water and we put it in the ultrasonic unit. Um, we go through our process and we use very low temperatures um, and um, uh, due to the pressures that we're using in our system, we're able to really keep it at a, a raw temperature when we're doing our extract to remove the water to get a, a, an ultrasonic extract. Now, um, in our tinctures, uh, we then use uh, different types of organic craft spirits. And so um, the alcohols that we use are, are honey mead alcohol. We use, um, we just got a pear spirit, which I'm excited to dive into, lychee, um, coconut, and orange alcohols. So um, what we do when we have our finalized products is we will put them into a set of 432 hertz crystal bowls. And I've been doing this for about a decade and listening to my intuition, the products we develop are really an artistry. And I've, um, I've acquired quite a number of energetic attunements and tools over the course of this past decade. And I find that these tools give mild to moderate, sometimes even relatively profound um, changes, uh, either on the effects that my body feels, on the aromatic potency, 
And so lots of our oils can be um, intensified or potentiated without actually adulterating or adding any um, physical substance into the material. So some examples of that would be um, uh, infusing using sound vibration in the crystal bowls, which I just alluded to. Um, we have um, different pyramids and we'll set the oils under pyramids. Um, we found that organite. Um, if we want to utilize a, a frequency input, such as um, a hologram encoded with a specific frequency, or we can use one of these frequency cards that we have. Um, which, What's inside of the frequency card? Um, so I, I haven't asked the manufacturer for this specific card. Um, some of the other cards that we use um, are holograms that have been encoded uh, using different types of technologies. I'm not sure if it's a, if it's a Rife machine, but the the information gets encoded in that hologram, something like a CD. Mm. And so, organite is a combination of organic and in, inorganic compounds that is. Um, trapped inside of a resin and that resin when it dries it hardens and it presses the um the the inorganic materials the um the crystals uh it, it presses the crystals and the inorganic materials and the crystals when they're pressed that pressure on them creates a piezoelectric charge and so the metal that's found inside the organite works as a conductor and so it allows that that energy to amplify throughout the organite plate and so what i found is when we um, have an energetic input or a frequency input we can utilize the organite to enhance the signal and water and oils are very receptive to frequency input. And so um, really there's just so many different ways and tools that can be utilized to enhance the quality of the oils. We found that very specific geometric shapes um, that are coated with uh, rare earth metals such as gold or silver or platinum or rhodium uh, really enhance the quality of the oils. They, you can almost experience it such as a zingy feeling or a calming feeling. And the, the way that the oil shifts aromatically, it can, it can be bright and it can jump out. And, um, it's really such a process and a gift to be able to play with all these different types of tools. And I would say maybe about one to two new devices come into my field per year. And then I go back to the drawing board and I take all of our formulas and I'll, I'll see how does this new technology impact uh, one of the formulas. And then I'm able to feel it in my body. I'm able to perceive it with my senses. And then if I like the direction it goes, I'll test it on a few and then um, take it out into the entire collection. Um, you know, the arc crystal is a very powerful device that I found. Um, that is a, um, a laboratory grown crystal uh, by Nassim Haramin. And it's said to uh, be connected to the vacuum of space. And when I um, sit the oils on it for about 20 minutes to an hour, I really notice a potentiation on all the various layers aromatically that come through. And so literally year after year, there's a new way to play with the oils. And so um, one thing that makes our products unique is, you know, the intention is year after year, may they continue to get better and better and higher quality just because of all the energies and intention that's infused into them. You know, wow. our Nick, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you left the pharmacological industry, man, because you're a holistic <laughs> scientist. I mean, the way you describe these oils like this is wizardry. So essential oil wizardry is the website. And um, by the way, if you're interested in the products as we're you know talking together, as we're hanging out together, just go to wellnessforce.com forward slash wizard. 
use the code wellness force, you get 15% off. Thank you, Nick, for your generosity and your discounts. Because you guys, this is really like the culmination of so many years of Nick having fun. And we can all feel it from you, dude. We can all feel that you actually enjoy, you really have fun. You, you really have fun with your craft, with what you do. And it's different than your old industry. You know, that industry, um, occasionally, rarely it's needed. But we're in a time now where we can reactivate our fifth sense, that sense of smell, and we can do it in a way that's so exciting and so fun. Like this is truly like every single day I have a diffuser. This is real. If you guys ever come over to the house, if we ever do an event at the house, or maybe I'll just put it on social in the next week or so so you can see it. We have a diffuser here and I put in um, some of the Trinity. I also use this one. I use the frankincense uh, is it Cartier or Cart Carteri? How do you pronounce Carteri. it? Carteri. Mm -hmm. And I, I enjoy it. And when people come to the house, they're like, oh my God, Josh, I feel so calm. I feel so good. It's because we're mm -hmm. using our smell. Nick, why have we forgotten this? Like, what is it about us that we have just forgotten to really dive into that sense of smell? Like, are we distracted? Are we pulled in different directions? Like, this is really a reattunement, a recalibration, uh, like a reintegration of that fifth sense that that sense of smell um do you find that that it's something that in in many circles not obviously not in yours but in many circles it's just not the topic of conversation like we've just we've really forgotten about this yeah yeah so you know i i, I feel that it's been by design in that um chemical companies with all of these different uh, body care and uh, environmental cleaning products have really taught us what a scent is supposed to smell like. And it, it dulls our, our senses, you know, and so I, I touched on this a little bit earlier on. And I think we touched on this, our first conversation, and I, I loved how clear and pristine this felt. The oils really help to reactivate your awareness of your body. You know, the sense of smell, you know, these essential oils are very, very concentrated. In fact, um, one drop of peppermint essential oil is something equivalent to is something similarly equivalent to about 19 cups of peppermint tea steeped for 15 minutes. Oh. And so the amount of information found in a single drop of essential oil is so much information, Josh. And mm. this, this overload of information can be enough to wake us up from our slumber and to get our attention. And so when we're, we're smelling that peppermint straight out of the bottle and we feel that coolness enter our nostrils and we, it just energizes ourself, uh, but it also calms down our body and it feels very cooling and refreshing. All of a sudden we're brought into the present moment and we're feeling our body and we're smelling the intensity of that oil. Now, these oils may not need to be so concentrated for therapeutic uses, uh, especially if we were more in tune with our body. I know when I started my journey working with essential oils a decade ago, I was working with orally ingesting multiple drops of different types of essential oils every day. I would put the oils into an essential oil vaporizer. I would, um, I would actually use um, a lighter to heat up the oils and breathe them in directly into my you lungs. You were freebasing. <laughs> you were freebasing <laughs> essential oils. <laughs> that, that's, that's one way to look at it, Josh. And, yes. um, you know, that actually helped to um, get a bout of pneumonia, um, knock it out for me very quickly using oil of oregano, which I'm not suggesting for anyone because oil of oregano is extremely caustic and irritating to the lungs as well. But for me, the benefit versus the yeah. um, potential risk, potential benefits versus the potential risks was a gamble I was willing to take. So um, I was really 
deeply exploring the depths of where these essential oils um, can take you. And my senses were also very numbed from all the, the chemicals and the foods that I had put into my body over the course of a lifetime and the pollutants that are found in the air and the um, the electromagnetic frequencies that are all abound in our modern day world. And the oils, um, using these strong amounts in these experimental ways for me, really woke me up in many ways to the power of nature. Um, and really my first aha moment was um, that bout of uh, bacterial pneumonia that I was able to knock out um, a majority of it within about 48 hours compared to about seven to 10 ish days on two prior experiences. So as I continued to dive really deep um, with pure essential oils, orally ingesting, experimenting up with them in all types of ways, I, my senses started to wake up. I started to feel sensations or deeper levels of awareness within my, my physical body, within my mind. I started listening to my intuition on a deeper level. And as I continued along that phase, there was, um, there was another phase that grew out of that of, wow, these are really powerful. Maybe I need less. And what, what grew from an overly experimental um, wild young doctor out of school, it um, continued to inform me about my own inner awareness. And I started realizing that, you know, actually less is more when it comes to essential oils. Mm -hmm. And so I became more of a conservative radical, if you will, somewhere in between where I really have a appreciation for um, utilizing a, a tool or a medicine that I can feel and I can share and other people are going to perceive that. But I'm also recognizing the, the subtleties can also be really powerful. So I, I've learned to scale back my usage um, where I, I started diluting my oils and, and most of our blends are, are actually diluted in a carrier oil enhanced with um, ormus, uh, which we extract from dead sea salt and Celtic sea salt. And so um, less can really be more with the oils. And as we continue to work with essential oils, one of the biggest gifts that they can give us is not only that instantaneous connection with nature, especially for people that are in urban settings and or um, aren't, aren't able to engage with nature in the most desirable fashion. But if we're really listening and we dedicate a practice to working with the oils, they can inform us a deeper awareness of our own uh, physical body and our own aromatic senses. Man, pause right there. Let that land. Because if we're going to have well-being, we have to have self-awareness. Yes. So what I heard from you is that these oils can lead to greater self-awareness because they reactivate, refresh in that fifth sense of actually activating. So when we're breathing it in, when we breathe in the essential oil, and this is maybe something to talk about too that's really fascinating to me. There's ingesting essential oil and there's you know respirating. There's breathing in the essential oil. But whether it's through oral or whether it's through our nose – when we take that in, have you, with your background as a pharmacist, with all your academic studies, what was the gift you got when you were a pharmacist in that uh, world, in that previous world of the biological awareness, you know, the academic awareness of what, what are the processes that are going on inside of our body when we ingest or when we breathe in an essential oil? Is it down-regulating the autonomic nervous system to be more parasympathetic? Is there other cascades going on? Like, let's go, let's go a little more science because people feel you. I feel you as a man who's deeply spiritual, deeply connected to earth, understanding of all these frequencies and everything else. But from a straight biological standpoint, like what's, what's really happening, you know, when we, when we breathe them in, when we, when we ingest them in. Mm -hmm. So when we are breathing in these um, aromatic terpenes found inside essential oils, they are, um, when we breathe them in through the nose and uh, 
we smell that fresh scent of orange. Instantaneously, we have a remembrance of when we were a child and our mom used to press fresh orange juice that was growing from our tree in Southern California. So what happens when we first inhale is the, the scent, it triggers the, um, the amygdala and the hippocampus and the memory centers inside of the brain. And then these um, receptors are also going to take this, um, these pharmacologically active constituents and it's going to uh, be then transported in through the body. And so when we're inhaling something into the lungs um, through our nose or through our mouth, those oils and those volatile um, terpenes are going to be uh, absorbed into our lungs through the alveoli, and they're going to pass into our bloodstream instantaneously. So pharmacologically speaking, it's a very effective way to um, take a deep inhalation, especially something that's concentrated. And when I say very effective, I mean, it can be very strong or concentrated. And so for specific purposes, you know, in, in my example, when I had bacterial pneumonia, I wanted to knock it out. And I knew that the site of infection was directly into my lungs. So if I were to orally ingest um, an antibiotic, which I, I did do for bacterial pneumonia two years in a row prior to that experience, in order for those um, antibiotics to penetrate into my lungs, it's a, it's a much slower period um, in order for the saturation to get into my lungs. And it's not as effective or efficient as something that is antibacterial, antimicrobial, um, antiviral to breathe it directly into my lungs and let the, um, let the oils saturate the area that's infected directly. So each oil contains um, either dozens to hundreds of um, chemical constituents. Um, you know, rose, for instance, is very complex and has several hundred um, constituents. And amazingly, some of, some of its most um, beautiful, pristine and, and exotic aromatic notes, it doesn't come from the main constituents, but it comes from the minor constituents found inside of rose. And so, it's, it's nature's brilliance um, that, that weaves this cascading symphony that can really bring up memories and it can trigger different organ systems or um, sense or experiences inside of our body. While it can also work on different types of different receptor sites. And so, uh, the world of essential oils really invites um, a, a wide array of effects in the person that works with them. It's so powerful because I think about the 432 frequency and all you talked about um, with the, the, the crystals from crystal uh, bowls. the crystal bowls. Mm -hmm. and, and I've heard of his work before, too. Um, tell people for, for, if they don't know, that was a wonderful answer, by the way, about the biology. Oh my gosh. I mean, I can literally see people jotting down notes. You don't have to jot down the notes, you guys, all the show notes are right here below the video. Um, but tell us like how you found the, the crystals and it was with Nassim, right? Uh, how Nassim did you, mm -hmm. how did you find that? Cause I've, I've heard him speak on Gaia and, um, also with the ions, the Institute for Noetic Sciences. So this is someone that is incredibly educated in all the Western modalities, physiology, quantum physics, quantum computing, even how did that relationship come to be? Because you're a man of spirit and science. So is he, have you met him? Like how did that relationship unfold and how does that uh, support your oils? Mm -hmm. So, um, I haven't met Nassim though. I, I have seen him speak, um, at lightning in a bottle, um, last decade. And he's a very intriguing and interesting man, very bright and um, genius. 
wild, wild genius yeah. was my interpretation of him. And my business partner, Carter, was the one who turned me on to the arc crystal. And when Carter and I co-created our Ascension formula, ironically developed in December 2019, right before the pandemic rolled out, hmm. um, we experimented with uh, putting the arc crystal underneath the bottle as we were blending it. And the the potency of it was absolutely astounding for Ascension. And when I re-blended Ascension for the first time, I noticed that something was significantly different, though we use all the same ratios in all the same charging techniques. That had informed me the, the energetic impact um, and also the aromatic potency that it elevated uh, associated with the arc crystal specifically. And that led to my investment of the crystal where I experimented with it a lot more. And I've been really happy to use it uh, to energize all of our oils. Now, something that's unique and fun is that um, energetic enhancements don't always make a formulation or a pure oil better or more desirable. Sometimes it takes an oil in a direction you don't want to go. And so for that reason, again, this is an artistic expression and it's one that's guided by my intuition and um, decade of experience in exploring all these realms. Uh, and it's it's really an, an artist tapestry that I love playing with. Well, I love listening to you speak, man, because this whole world, I'm like a guest, <laughs> you know, like I'm <laughs> I'm literally just like a fly on the wall with Dr. Nick. And I, and I love it because so many people right now, we need to breathe more. We really do. It's, it's a requirement. And if we're blunted from that sense where we really don't first have the awareness, cause we're so diluted by all the toxic chemicals and how we've been retrained, you know, something that comes to mind is Febreze. I think there was a study I read where they worked for years and years and years for the Febreze thing, the scent, and finally they found it. It was like this perfect bliss point, but it's unnatural. It's actually created from synthetic chemicals, but you're right. We've been trained, Nick. We've been trained to blunt that sense, that sense of smell, to accept things as real when they're actually not real at all. They're kind of imposter sense, but that aside, if we're recalibrating and we're actually learning how to smell naturally again, how to breathe properly again, this is why I focus so much on breath work, not just for myself, but for all the thousands of people that are involved in the breathe program. And there was something really special we did last year. You know, you and I combined forces and we thought, okay, what are the things that are going to help people from a respiration standpoint, but also from like an emotional standpoint, what supports, supports people emotionally and what makes them breathe. And we came up with this incredible partnership for the Breathe program, and it's this Breathe Essentials Pack, which I love. And um, tell people like how you sat and formulated this. You actually took some of the practices in the Breathe program. You said you did them for nine months, which I want to give you like a digital hug and just say, wow, that's that's a lot more than what most people do. Most people, they learn in three months, they take one or two tools, but to do a nine month deep dive into breath work, like what, what came up for you there? And how did you even come up with the essentials? This is like the best of the best squeezed into a nice bundle for all of us to enjoy so we can breathe properly, be supported and also be supported emotionally. So dude, what, what came up for you in this process of learning and of creating the essentials pack and, and just share with people? Yeah, well, maybe I'll take people on a, a little journey of my exploration so they can really feel the before and uh, present now with our um, our collaboration. So I, I took an initiative to start meditating daily and working with the breath um, early 2020, around the time that the uh, pandemic kicked off. And I had a number of friends that released breath practices um, around the same time. And mm. so I explored um, a number of different breath practices and I worked with yours for about nine months. And um, what I did was I, I combined my tools that um, my, my knowledge and awareness of, of literally hundreds of different uh, botanical extracts and um, 
essential oil blends and um, and ultrasonic tinctures. And I tuned in to the, the desired outcome that I wanted to experience by going through the course. And so we did a snapshot. Uh, I, I started diving into the practice and, um, and exploring it with my own physiology around a similar time that I released a package um, for, the, for the audience. And so um, I'm really grateful because um, breath work, what it's done for me is it, it's helped to create a, um, a deeper level of stillness within the mind and a relaxation in the physical body. Um, what I love about your program, Josh, is it really is, um, it's done very professionally well in terms of the video and the audio and the, the structure of it, it really helps to entertain and inform the mind and show the practicality in numerous different types of applications um, for all different types of individuals with different backgrounds. And I, I think to appeal to the linear uh, part of the brain, um, while simultaneously empowering people with, with a short, effective seven minute and or a longer, deeper dive 21 minute practice that people work up into, you're able to really integrate in a healthful way to inform yourself um, how this breath practice can be supportive for different types of situations that arise in the modern day world. And so what I did um, very recently with you, Josh, was I, um, after working with your, with your um, breath course um, within my physical self, I, I chose to take a deeper reflection on what would be the best oils um, and tinctures to support with both the respiratory and the um, emotional systems. Mm, thank you for that. Wow. I'm like, I've never heard somebody describe the art and science of practicing breath work like you just did. So boom, like, wow, just really feeling gratitude for you. And mm. there's the respiratory side, there's the emotional side. Um, one of the things that I think we really must discuss here is the biological processes that go on with the eucalyptus, the respire, the spark tincture, the, the super immune boost, like that's just on the respiratory side. And then of course, if we have time, which let's create the time, uh, we'll talk about the emotional support with the invigor, the nurture, the psychic protection, the violet chill in the respiratory support in this bundle. This is why I'm so excited about this. Like if you, if you could describe one of your most favorite oils for the specificity of respiratory support, um, which one would it be out of these five oils that you'd want to talk about first? Yeah. So, um, maybe I should talk about respire, which is more of a concentrated, um, alchemical formulation of, uh, eight different essential oils. Um, so we have eucalyptus polybractiae, Ravensar aromatica. Um, we have black spruce, Niali, uh, Laleshwa, um, which is African wild sage. Um, we have, um, we have thyme linalool and black spruce, which I think I named, and CO2 extracted frankincense cartieri. And so this essential oil blend, it helps to support bronchodilation to actually help to open up the lungs. Mm. It also has a broad spectrum effects inside of the body in terms of um, actually supporting, uh, supporting the immune system, um, eucalyptus and, uh, a few other oils, I believe, uh, tea tree was another one, um, have been studied and found that they increase white blood cell count inside of the body. And what does that tell us? That doesn't necessarily tell us that we're sick, but that it's supporting our immune system by bringing these, um, these powerful, uh, cells, uh, that are part of our immune system uh, up to the surface. So this respire formulation, um, it's really concentrated. It, it is actually one of our pure essential oil blends. We have a, a few pure essential oil blends. And when I say that, what I mean is it's not diluted in a carrier and it absolutely uh, can be. So one of the ways that I like to work with respire 
is to take a few drops into the hands. I'm cupping my hands. around my nose and around my mouth. And I'm breathing. I'm taking three deep inhalations in. And so when I'm overly congested, sometimes um, this experience will be quite intense and it can help to break up the phlegm in the mucus inside of my lungs. And sometimes um, it will um, really help to work as an expectorant. So um, to get some of the mucus, the phlegm and bacteria out of my system. What I then do after I take the three deep inhalations is I'll typically massage it directly into my chest. If you have a sensitivity to um, essential oils or sensitive skin, you may consider using um, infusing this into a carrier oil before massaging into your chest. So you can almost think of this as a mentholatum type of experience that you're massaging into your chest. And so it helps to cool down while the oils are, are breaking into the skin or penetrating into the skin, I wish to say, um, you might feel a cooling and almost a, um, uh, a breaking down of, of phlegm and mucus. And the, the lungs feel more open and vital. And so this can be a powerful formulation in conjunction with a breath practice um, used before and or afterwards um, some people might even want to choose to experiment um, with it during um, if they want to be more actively engaged while they're doing a breath practice, because there's so many different styles to mm -hmm. be breathing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, this is an example of a great formulation that could be helpful for um, really impacting the respiratory system and um, soothing the throat and the lungs and um, helping to break up mucus or phlegm or um, bacteria that are um, negatively affecting the body. And so um, Respire is also a great ally to have um, for anyone that has an infrared sauna. You could put a few drops into, um, into a towel or, um, or, or drop a few drops um, in a place that isn't going to stain your sauna and you can let it naturally aerate in the environment. Um, depending upon the size of the sauna, some people might wanna keep their eyes closed as it's um, volatizing so um, it doesn't cause any eye sensitivity. Quick question, um, quick question on that. Like yeah. the, the big piece that I heard from you was the, was the dilation, the bronchodilation. Yes. This is the expectorant. So, you know, we're, I have to say this, we're not giving quote medical advice. No. What we're giving is anecdotal and also community-based um, advice about our own personal experience, right? And what else do we have, Nick, besides our own report card? How we feel is our biggest report card in life. Um, we even have to say things like this isn't medical advice because there are people out there that kind of abuse that modality where they're like, oh, you know, I'm, this is the way to go. This is the only way to go. That's not what I get from you here. What I get from you here is these are support agents. These are, a these are agents of support in the body. And this stimulation of the immune system from the spark tincture, we got to talk about this. Uh, the spark tincture is something brand new. It wasn't in the pack last year. It, you just added it. How did you find this? And why is this also part of the respiratory support? side of, of the essentials pack. Yeah. So, um, the spark tincture is a very unique formulation. And, um, I think what I'm going to cover is, is more of the basic, uh, way that I like to work with the spark tincture. So, um, there, there's also a very experimental way that I work with the spark tincture, which, um, is very unique and, and special in its own right. So, our essential oil tinctures were designed with the, um, you know, I, I shared that during my, uh, the beginning of my exploration and working with the oils, I was um, working with orally ingesting multiple drops of many different essential oils. And I did this for quite a period of time. And um, the, 
that wild experimental phase brought it back into a space of a deeper level of balance and listening where yeah. I realized that one drop of, of um, peppermint essential oil is so much information and it's, it's way more than your body needs. It, it creates this initial shock before the body realizes, oh, th this is beneficial. Send it here, send it here, send it here. And so um, our essential oil tincture, when utilized correctly, is intended to um, be that middle path for individuals that are feeling called to orally ingest essential oils, which um, I'm, not, I'm not as strong of an advocate for, um, for all people. Um, and I think that it, it definitely has an important role and can be very beneficial in um, many cases. And so our, our essential oil tinctures, what they do is you're taking what used to be a, a drop of essential oil, which was approximately 40 to 60 milligrams of um, a concentrated essential oil, and you're diluting it. Um, and we're using organic sugarcane alcohol in a majority of our essential oil tinctures. We use the craft spirits in our ultrasonic tinctures. And so our, um, our essential oil tinctures are typically about 90-ish percent of the sugarcane alcohol. And the drop size are also smaller in regards to our tincture formulations. And so um, we're typically looking at about, um, let's say about 30-ish milligrams. And um, so I would, I would use mathematics and I would say between the variations in terms of drop size and concentration of essential oil tincture, I would approximate for a majority of our essential oil tinctures, we're talking about, about two and a half milligrams to five milligrams of essential oils in a single drop that's infused in alcohol as a carrier. And so the alcohol serves um, as a dilutant that really helps the body uptake the essential oil in a more harmonious way that causes less shock to the system uh, because it's a smaller concentration so that your body can more uh, effectively utilize it. So this is all my intuition and experimentation and getting feedback from hundreds of people over the course of the years. Yeah. And so to answer your, your question now that I've informed um, our audience a little bit more about how I like to use the essential oil tinctures and the intentions on why I developed these for individuals that are choosing to ingest pure oils, giving them a, a different option, so with this spark tincture, I'm going to go ahead and enjoy a drop on my tongue right now. Literally so just one drop. One drop yeah. is um, because these are, these are so powerful. And again, the oils have so much information. So I like putting a drop, one drop on my tongue, rolling my tongue. You did a yogi and, cooling breath there. I noticed you curled your tongue. That's, that's to cool the breath. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yep. So, um, and, and that was, that's just an intuitive practice. So you just, uh, educated me about that or reminded mm. me about the, the Yogi cooling breath. Yes. So oftentimes I will roll my tongue and take a deep inhalation into the lungs because mm. why, um, as I had shared before, if we're, if we're working on the respiratory system and, or wanting to put something into our, um, bloodstream where it becomes pharmacologically active, breathing into the lungs, uh, takes us, uh, directly into the alveoli, um, where it can exchange with the bloodstream and take the active constituents found inside the spark tincture, which is a combination of peppermint, um, Ravensara and Tulsi. And um, so the spark tincture is very cooling and it's, um, it's a little drying. Uh, and I, I don't say drying in a negative sense. What I mean is if you're overly congested, um, it will, it helps to break up the mucus and the phlegm. And, mm -hmm. um, and so that drying quality, uh, if someone's <sighs> really mucusy and, um, uh, having overproduction of phlegm, 
the spark can help to break up that mucus and, um, and dry out, uh, that irritation. Mm. So, um, the way that I enjoy working with the spark, um, can be supplementally used with respire or some of the other, um, pure oils such as, um, Ravint, Sara or, um, eucalyptus. And, um, and so I enjoy a single drop on the tongue with a deep inhalation through the mouth for that. It's really potent. So there's the eucalyptus, the Ravens, Ravenstara, is that how you pronounce it? Ravenstara, the Respire, the Spark Tincture, the Super Immune Boost. Um, let's shift gears though, because man, like one thing that I get, I would say the number one email, Nick, that I receive, or even the number one comment on social media is, I'm stressed. I mean, mm -hmm. let's just go, let's just go right to the root. I'm stressed. Yeah. And so when we're stressed, there are certain plant extracts, plant medicines, which is really what essential oils are. They're, they're, they're medicines. Um, out of everything that's in the emotional side of the Breathe Essentials pack, which one comes up first for you where it's like an immediate yes, like an immediate go-to to really calm the emotions, to calm <laughs> that, that autonomic nervous system out of all the ones that are in the pack? Yeah, so um, there... I would say a lot of the options really um, go to that area. And when we're talking about stress, I feel there's so many different um, inputs of stress. And so different, uh, different oils that were selected might be more beneficial for different types of stress. Um, what I feel is uh, maybe the most practical um, for reducing stress and helping to, um, regulate the nervous system would be our ultrasonic tinctures. And so, um, our, our breathe collection, uh, that we're co-creating comes with one of our ultrasonic tinctures, either the ultrasonic skull cap and, or the, um, or I should say, or the ultrasonic, uh, ashwagandha tincture. And so each of these plants have their own individual nuances. Um, I find them both to be very effective and, um, skull cap, I might find to be a little bit more helpful for relaxation and focusing ashwagandha. I find to be a little bit more on the relaxing side and almost regenerative, um, and slightly euphoric. Um, so they each have their own nuances, but they're both very helpful for stress. Um, really quickly touching into um, uh, other allies that can be supportive for stress, you know, the violet chill. Um, it's a combination of lavender, cedar, frankincense, myrrh, and helichrysum. Um, when times are stress, um, utilizing the tincture, um, it could be part of a, a regular practice. And when things are even more intense, um, you can just take a deep inhalation of the violet chill, or you can massage it into the bottom of your feet, um, where it, it enters, um, through the pores in the bottom of your feet. And it typically enters the bloodstream in about five to 15 minutes for, for lots of these I've never smaller even thought about that. I've never even thought about putting it on the feet. Why the feet? Um, so the pores are large enough that these small and aromatic molecules can penetrate in through the bottom of the feet. And so they can, um, enter into the bloodstream in that way where they're pharmacologically active. So I like doing a few drops below the nose. Sometimes I'll even put it on the wrist points. Um, and maybe that has to do with hitting some of my meridian lines, mm. um, and, uh, applying it, uh, below the bottom of my feet. And I, I also think when we're massaging the bottoms of our feet, we're, we're grounding into our physical body. We yeah. are, we are consciously making a choice to care for our body in that moment in a loving way. And so by, by taking a step away from the external stress and by loving our own physical body, and then, um, synergizing it with some powerful essential oils, uh, we're really empowering ourselves to, um, to relax and to deepen into the moment. And that can be very helpful to embody our presence, uh, when we're feeling stressed. The skull cap is interesting too. I, I, I don't exactly know how you harvest that or what the skull cap is. You said that for stress, you really like to lean into the skull cap 
you can do the skull cap or the ashwagandha, mm-hmm. but what is it about the skull cap that is so, uh, I guess you could say relaxing or healing for the nervous system so that we can be less stressed essentially. Yeah. So, um, when, when I talk about our ultrasonic extracted tinctures, what I'd like to share is, um, I've, I've experienced many tinctures over the years and, um, my experience with the majority of tinctures on the market, and I'm not saying this in a negative sense is that, um, I get a general sense that they're good for me. And even though my system is pretty sensitive and attuned, I don't always feel an immediate impact um, when I when I take um, uh, plant tinctures. With our ultrasonic tinctures, because of the process, it really um, it really captures the the energy, the intelligence, and the pharmacologically active constituents, and we concentrate it down um, by by collecting that ultrasonic extract. And then we um, recombine it, we, we um, reconstitute it into a tincture formulation. And my experience with our ultrasonic tinctures is you can really feel the essence of the plant. And so um, the essence of Skullcap for me with our ultrasonic tinctures is such that it relaxes my physical body Um, like if my, if my heart's racing, I I feel a deeper level of calmness. Mm. Um, though I haven't ever measured the heart rate before and after, um, I notice, I notice it sweeps over my mind. And so if I have overly engaged thoughts, I, I notice that the, the thoughts slip away and I, um, it's not that my mind slows, but it gets more honed and focused. And so it sharpens um, so that I can I can uh, think more precisely. And so um, that's one of the gifts of Skullcap is that it um, I find that it helps to reduce uh, reduce stress, um, calm my nervous system while also helping to hone my mind so that I'm, I'm sharp and bright and I'm prepared for a podcast like this. Mm. This is so cool to get a little slice of your life's work. I think about all the wisdom that the trees and all the plants have and, um, you know, different journeys that I've had, I've connected with these plants. <clears throat> and I, I was talking to someone about this the other day. We were at the park. I was holding my son. And I was feeling like, you know, all the different um, awarenesses and all the different states of being, of consciousness. Do you ever think the plants are actually the ones that are seeing things for how they really are? And we're seeing things through a lens that's totally different than the wisdom of the plants. In other words, the plants might see things in a 5D consciousness. The plants might be aware of what's going on with different colors, different shapes, different all kinds of inputs that we just can't see because God designed us in a certain way with the PFC, the posterior cingulate, the amygdala, and our visual cortex to see and experience things in a certain way. But when we access this wisdom from the plants, Nick, I'm curious how you feel about this. It's almost like we go into their world we, we go into the world of the plants so that we can bring some of their wisdom to here, to this one, to the 3D. But all these mm-hmm. things, you know, even with the skull capping, the ashwagandha and all the things that you're infusing into these oils, it's almost like this gateway to experience the world through the eyes of the plants. What do you feel about that? I have truth bumps on my body, Josh. That was... <laughs> That was really powerful. Um, to answer your question, I don't know that I've specifically ever inquired about life and consciousness of a tree and how that relates to my own consciousness. And what you're sharing really does resonate in my own experience because, um, you know, I'll bring it back to earlier in our conversation when I commune with these plants in the work with the oils or the, or the tinctures, they are informing me, you know, they're working on a chemical level inside of my physical body. They are um, aromatically, they're, they're triggering my emotional center and my memory systems. And, um, and that information is informing me. And so the more I'm learning 
you know, this information is, is traveling to me, the more I get attuned to their vibration and to their intelligence. And so in a way I can almost perceive, um, you know, the way that I perceive life may be, um, different than most people on this planet. And I, I also do perceive that that is probably true for most people. Yeah. And I can say that, that my point of view in the way that I engage life and, um, and reality, I know it's, it's been a very, um, it's a very intriguing perspective and it has been consistently informed by all types of different supplements and medicines and oils and plant extracts. And, um, that continuously shapes my physical body, my mind, and it connects me in deeper with my soul. And so the more that I commune with the intelligence of the plants, it, I do feel that it brings an energetic intelligence and a resonance to bring me into a deeper level of harmonics with nature. Mm, I love that word harmonics. Yeah. Like, a, you know, I, I've studied so much about Tesla and frequency and, and even the, with this focused life force energy, I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, I learned about it through Luke's story. And the more that I really dig into the science, and I've also heard um, scientists talk about this one specifically, Neil deGrasse Tyson once talked about this on the Joe Rogan show. And he said at the smallest level that we could ever measure with any tools that we have, what we really find are self-replicating mechanisms. So the, the, the purpose of life is actually to expand, to replicate, to grow, to nourish, to give. It's, it's always, always expanding, always expanding. And I feel like if we can just make a few choices, just a few choices to bring us closer to that type of like, I guess you could say microscopic wisdom where nature at her deepest measurable point is actually just a self-replicating life force, then how can we embody that in ourselves? The only way, Nick, and I, and I wanna hear your take on this, the only way that I can see is if we actually let go of all these modern distractions and we just choose to engage with nature uh, in the best possible ways that we can. Essential oils being one of them, so is breath, so is food, so is loving, so is me giving you a hug, so is everything. We, we need to return, we must. We, we are being called to return to these fundamental, very simple practices that essential oil is a part of. And I don't know how that hit you, but please share like a return to the basics is a return to the self-replicating molecules that nature herself is trying to remind us of. What I feel or what comes to me is simplicity is key. And that our ancestors had a different type of quality of problems and struggle. And it's almost like we've mastered our environment to the level that our environment is mastering us. And that the, you know, we're not, um, there's a large subset of the population that is not concerned with how am I going to survive today? Is there food on my table? Do I have access to water? Yeah. Um, I also do want, want to acknowledge that there are um, way too many individuals on this planet that are suffering and don't have access to these things. Um, I guess what I'm bringing, bringing forth, um, this is, there's a very interesting analogy that I um, was brought to. And the access that many people living in the modern day world have um, the access that we as individuals can have to all types of tools, supplements, riches, could be compared to what a king hundreds of years ago may have commanded in his personal coffers. I mean, I can source frankincense, myrrh, and um, rare exotic copal resins yes. um, in a matter of days where these kings might have been limited to frankincense and or myrrh. 
And so the, the access that we have um, as a potential for society has really changed the fundamental of our problems. And I think on some level, this new system and way of relating with the world has created a new level of problems and struggles. And I do, I do integrate that simplicity is key and we're all learning to reconnect with our body. We're all learning to listen deeper to nature. We're all listening to the importance of drinking clean water. We're learning about the importance of having clean soil, rich with nutrient, with um, with microbes to develop foods that are more rich with nutrients, so that our body, our bones, our teeth get the minerals and nutrition that it actually needs. And so we're developing as a species a deeper level of empathy and connection for all that surrounds us and our impact um, there within. So I'm grateful to be alive during this times because it comes with its set of challenges and difficulties, but also never has there been a time on the planet such as this rich with opportunity Mm -hmm. um, that our consciousness can awaken to such a level of compassion and growth. So I'm, I'm really holding out for um, peace and freedom on planet Earth. Starting with the peace and the freedom that we cultivate in ourselves, Nick. And like, I didn't know you were going to talk about the, I think it was the Magi that visited Jesus. And they, they brought these gifts of like, I think it was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It is. And mm -hmm. oh my God, if it's powerful enough to be in the Bible, and I, I actually, for people that are watching, I'm, I don't believe that God is a bearded dude in a cloud. Um, I believe that God is an omnipresent force that guides and loves all things. And if in this recollection and this recount in the Bible, the one I love to use is the King James Version. Um, the oldest one, I think it was 1644, the original text before it was, I guess you could say adulterated, Nick. Um, these were gifts that were brought to an infant uh, that was being born in Nazareth. You know, like the, the, the quintessential meaning of loving thy neighbor and loving thyself through the archetype of Jesus um, these gifts were bared to him. And guess what, you guys? Some of those gifts were oils. Some of those gifts were oils. And I, I really hadn't thought about it until our conversation today, which is why I love podcasts. And this is why I love having conversations like this, because something beautiful and organic always shines through. And um, I just want to thank you. And I want to I wanna give us a little bit of spaciousness to go over anything that you think we missed, because in the Breathe program, we've had so many people go through it. And, and I want to read something that I read to you, Nick, before we started the recording, and it was from uh, Jill. And, and Jill said, I could read this, and she's okay with it. She said, I'm on day eight of the training, and I wanna say thank you so much for this amazing program. I'm a pediatrician, and over many years of training, there's always been a schedule to follow. I guess it's because of the years of patterning, it's been difficult for me to just start meditating, and there hasn't been any real guidance. Having a roadmap like this program has helped me have the confidence to believe I can be successful at meditation, Focusing on my breathing is the key to settle my monkey mind that has distracted me on so many other attempts at finding inner peace. I just want to let you know and share my thoughts. This program has been the key to freedom for me to let go of old, stubborn, negative programming. So huge gratitude to Jill. And with that spaciousness, and we talk about turning down the volume of the incessant thoughts, bringing up the fifth sense, that sense of smell, um, to really recalibrate ourselves. What did we not dive into that you're feeling called to when it comes to this incredibly broad, I mean, this deserves like 15, 20 hours of conversation, incre incredibly broad topic of healing and stress reduction and general wellness through the art and the science essentially of essential oil wizardry. Like what did we not cover that you're feeling called to cover? I feel grateful for what we have shared together, Josh. And I feel as you touched base on, um, I can literally share for days about everything that the plant has plants have taught me. Yeah. And I feel really, um, 
I love what we've covered so far. And I, I think it's just enough to inspire the listeners in the right ways. And maybe what I would comment is that there's um, a number of other oils and tinctures that were um, found inside of this um, specific package that we've co-created. And that um, some of my uh, favorite uses and or um, considerations for each of these oils is um, just written on the website directly for these. So um, yeah, our, our website is a plethora of information. I do my best to um, inform everybody on um, the qualities of the different oils that I've explored and learned um, through many different ways, uh, either through reading or um, through my own physical body or from listening to other people's experiences. Um, that website has been a, a, a gathering of information and um, is a resource for the community to use. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. And it's all laid out. Um, it's essentialoilwizardry.com. But if you guys want to go right to the page, just do wellnessforce.com forward slash wizard, and it'll take you right to the page. We've created a shortcut to get you there. You can learn more about the respiratory, the emotional support. I really love this. This is why we put it in the breathe program. Like you're the only, and I'll, and I'll be totally honest here. I've always had this sense of distrust in my psyche and in my nervous system when it comes to the essential oil industry. I really did. I had, I was just like, these things don't do anything, whatever. But when I found out about your oils and it actually wasn't even through you, it was through a friend named Mike in Encinitas, gosh, six, seven years ago. Um, there was just something different. It just straight up felt different. That's the only way I could describe it. And that's a testament to the heart and soul and the science you put in to your oils. It's fundamentally different the way that you craft them, the way that you bring them to the world, it's all on the page. You guys, wellnessforce.com forward slash wizard. Make sure you go to get this package. Now, the package is already heavily discounted as it is, so the code won't work for the package, but you can use the code wellnessforce and you get 15% off the entire site, which is wonderful. So thank you, Nick, from my heart to yours. And as we say goodbye, two and a half years ago, I asked you this question. Now, with what you've learned, with the pandemic, with the insanity, with the potential for growth and love too, how do you define wellness? Like, what does wellness mean to you today compared to maybe what it meant to you a couple of years ago? How do you define that? Wellness to me today is faith, trust, resilience, inner knowing, love, kindness. It's the embodiment of listening and integrating that information and preparing your physical vessel, tapping into your heart and sharing your creative passions and purpose with the collective. During these important times, the, the rawness of, let's say the old world breaking down that we are witnessing as a collective, this rawness is showing us that the authority doesn't come from out, but it's an inner authority that we are remembering and reconnecting to. So wellness is an adaptability. It is learning to have peace of mind, a stillness in the heart, and a compassion. A deep level of compassion is so crucial for the modern day. And to develop that body intelligence that we've been discussing over this, um, over this conversation, be it breath work, be it work with the oils, be it meditation, sun gazing, going out into a river, making love with a sweet human, however it is that you choose to get into your zone in a way that is not escaping, but deepening your connection to all that is. When we really listen to our heart, we'll know what true wellness is for us. And on that note, until Nick and I see you again, we're both wishing you love and wellness and a digital hug and clean respiration through these amazing oils. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Aho. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>